Hello everyone, uh, my name is Carlos. Um, many, many thanks for stopping by. In this video, I would like to talk about the Moon and its main features. I mean, the Moon is an amazing celestial body that really fascinates me and is, is so close to us. It's so close to us, but you know, why, why we don't know much about it? You know, NASA started these missions to go to the moon and, and they stop. You know, the moon is so close, we haven't colonized it, we haven't actually researched it properly, and there must be a reason for it. So, there's a lot of information on the internet, a lot of conspiracy theories on YouTube, and some of this information is, is it's very valid. I mean, it's some serious researchers and scientists proving so many things on, on the moon and on space in general. But this has been an incentive for me to, to try to do some research. So I'm not an astronomer, um, but I purchased myself a couple of months ago, I purchased myself a second hand telescope, Celestron next star of ISE and I'm, I'm starting to, to to look at the moon and, and, and to to get some information about it so on a clear sky on a clear night when you look at the moon even with the naked eye you can notice lighter areas and some sections of it are darker I think probably 65% of the visible side of the moon is covered by darker patches. The, the light areas are actually called lunar highlands and um, they compose of a light colored rock which is called an orthocyte. The darker areas on the, on the other hand are called media and media is the plural, is the Latin word for seas, you know, you go to um, the sea of serenity, the sea of tranquility, mari imbrium, you know, mari nectaris, and so on and so forth. Seas are actually cooled lava flows of a dark rock, rock called basalt. Now, one, one question that comes to mind is how how all this how did it happen? What geological processes were involved in the formation of these light and darker areas on the moon? And also, why so many craters? Well, in the past, and I think probably still nowadays, the moon has been bombarded by meteoroids, asteroids, comets and other celestial interplanetary bodies. Also, in the past, and probably now, there's been some tectonic activity on the Moon. So, volcanoes erupted, causing lava to flow and to fill sections of the Moon. Another aspect of the lunar surface is um, the mountains and the, the, all these craters and all these luminosities as well. Now, w when bodies impact the surface of the moon, they create they create holes, they create depressions. Um, this is called impact craters. So there comes a, meteor a meteoroid or an asteroid. It hits the moon at high velocity and at certain angle. And obviously, once it impacts, it causes a hole, a depression on the surface, and a lot of material goes upwards. A lot of regolith, or a kind of dust that it doesn't have a biogenic 
material, a lot of dust and rock is displaced and it, it goes all the way up. They call all this ejecta and then it comes down and normally it falls on the surrounding areas of the crater. Now some, some of these craters are really tiny when you actually s zoom in you see these little tiny craters but others on the other hand are, are big you know are, are, some of them are huge I mean as an example uh, Copernicus is 93 kilometers wide you know in diameter so if you were to if, if you are a fast runner and if you were to run from one side of Copernicus assuming that you have plain terrain you know a flat kind of floor <laughs> and if you were to run from one side to the other it will probably take you three hours to reach the other end so that, that's how wide it is and that's just Copernicus which is a middle sized crater I mean all the, all the craters like the one you have in the South Pole uh, the South Pole Aitken Basin is 2,500 kilometers in, diam in diameter I mean that, that is that is that proportion is gigantic basically now craters are categorized as simple craters or complex craters I mean simple craters um, you know the body is slam against the surface of the moon it produces the hole then you see the ejecta going all the way up and then obviously on the on the on the bed floor of the impact you got fractures um, you got pressure and you get melted rock all over the place and th that is a that is a simple crater a complex crater like you see many on the moon on the other hand as well as having you know the hole the the, the ejecta and the fractures and the pressure and the melted rock um, the bedrock it also features like a um, central peak or central peaks which are probably caused by probably caused by the depression you know the impact you know uh, moving the earth around and, and uh, producing these formations uh, and as well as, as, as these central peaks um, complex craters have uh, mountainous regions around it and also high walls so I mean that's that's the basic difference between a, a simple crater and a complex one now this you know <laughs> you look at this beautiful moon right you look at the moon and you see these beautiful um, you know areas and and actual colors when, when, when you the, the actual the moon actual the, the actual moon actually has a bit of color it's, it's got you know nice blue hues and green and whites and when you look at the moon you, you're only looking at one side of the moon the visible side and there's a lot of cons conspiracies out there, um, you know, stating that uh, you know there must be a reason for it. You know, there must be a reason why the darker side of the moon we never see, and maybe you know someone is out there hiding something. And we we do. Um, you started you start to wonder because we do have the technology. We have uh, powerful satellites out there, but they're not pointing at the moon for some reason, and and. You know, it's question marks that you know come to mind, and, and you start hesitating. What's going on in here? But the rotation of the moon, the, the actual uh, reason why we see only one side of the moon, it has, it has um, a valid reason. Uh, basically, the moon revolves around Earth, and it actually rotates on an axis so why we only see one side of it we only see one side of it because it takes about 27 and a half days for the moon to make one completely complete orbit around earth but at the same time it takes 27 and a half days for the actual moon to make one rotation around around its axis axis so because this rotation period is equal to the period of revolution about earth we only see one side. We only see only one face, and that face is the visible, you know, the visible side of the moon. No matter when or where we look at it. So there you go. I mean, that's that's a, a scientific explanation of 
of why we only see one side of the moon. Um, and it, I mean, it, it is a joy to be able to, through a telescope or even through binoculars, to be able to observe this magnificent celestial body which is so close to us. It's, so, it's, it's out there, I mean, for everyone to explore. If you go yourself, I mean, if you have, if you, if you inquisitive and you want to not rely on all these pictures on the internet of the moon, all these videos on the moon, but yourself, actually, if you purchase yourself a small telescope, you can actually see yourself, and it's, it's, it's a joy to be able to, to, to see it. It's a beauty when you actually, through an eyepiece, you see a full moon and you can see the craters. And it's even better when you hook the telescope to a camera because then you can video the moon like I'm doing right now, like many people out there, many astronomers, many many researchers are doing out there. Um, you know, be able to video the moon, take pictures, process those pictures, study those pictures for yourself um, instead of looking at bloody pictures that you know, these agencies, NASA and other agencies, you know, put on those eyes for you to look at, you know, very, very bloody pictures out with a small telescope, you know, you, you can achieve all this and even better, you can actually do things yourself and look at yourself, you know, look yourself at, at those sections, of the, those areas of the moon, those those areas, you know, those, those seas and highlands and illuminations that you see on the moon. And the moon is always changing, you know, you, you never see the same, the same aspect of the moon on a given night, you know. There's always something to learn about it. So, I just wanted to, to talk to you about, you know, what you see on the moon, on a clear sky, what is in front of you through a telescope, you know, why you have lighter areas, the highlands, why you see darker areas, you know, the medias, the seas, and the composition of those areas, you know, highlands, composed of light colored rock, and the medias consisting of darker rock, you know, the craters, impact craters that formed many many years ago and probably still now you know hit hit the moon and, and keep forming you know small craters simple craters complex craters with central peaks and mountainous regions around it so there you go so you know the sky is the limit there's always something to learn um, it's good to do it yourself and if you have that quest, that desire to learn, you know, you can do it. So my, in, in my case, a couple of months ago, I just decided to buy a second hand telescope and then start learning. And in a short period, you know, I'm learning so much. And, and, and I like to share those findings with you. And as I go along in my journey, you can see the progression. You can see how f from day one when I first started, how I keep progressing and getting better in terms of the equipment that I have. And also in terms of when I'm able to produce, you know, the videos, the pictures, the resolution, you know, the post-processing. It's, it's, a, it's a fascinating subject, you know. Thanks for watching. Bye.